Welcome back, everybody. It's a mixed day for trading as we kick off the busiest week of earnings season and await the Fed decision on Wednesday. The major averages remain on pace for their biggest monthly gains of the year, but that's not saying much. They're coming off their worst first half since 1970. And my next guest warns stocks are still volatile and directionless and says stay defensive. Let's welcome back David Bonson. He's the founder and chief investment officer at the Bonson Group. And David, I always think of you as someone very long term sanguine on the market. So what are you kind of bracing for here? Yeah, that advice about uh, being defensive is kind of permanent advice, right? We always sort of lean into higher quality, but we do have a longer term perspective there. But we always like the types of companies that we're talking about that are dividend growers, good free cash flow generators, better balance sheets, which means they can kind of withstand longer periods of difficulty. And frankly, are the types of things that for the most part have done a lot better this year. You like Verizon. And I know some people who hate that stock after last yeah. week now. Well, that's why I like it, because of the people you know who hate it. <laughs> it is a pure contrarian play here. Eight and a half times earnings, a five and a half percent dividend yield that is not compromised and not in jeopardy. And so the reason Verizon is down is because they are in a difficult period. It's not for no reason. This isn't a steal. The company could stay in a struggling period for a while. And yet that's what we like to buy are companies that we have no doubt have a way out of these tough periods that have the cash, have the balance sheet, have the strategy to go forward, but are just out of favor, as you say, people that hate it right now. But that is priced in. That's what an eight and a half time multiple tells you. And we think investors are going to get paid if they patiently wait through this and get those dividends along the way. I think if I were to put it sort of more um, cosmically, they're mad at Verizon because they say I was in this for the dividend. And now in one week, you've wiped out all of my returns. And why did I bother? And, and what's the point? And can I trust these names? Can I trust Verizon? Okay, they can maybe even take a bad week and say, but can I trust it in the longer run? Or some of your other dividend yielders here, some peers that Verizon would have, what would you say to those investors who now feel a little rudderless? Yeah, the idea about the stock price uh, wiping away the dividend really misses the point of being a dividend investor. It did not wipe away the dividend. People got the dividend or they got more shares at lower prices. That compounding effect is actually very valuable. Hmm. And the fact of the matter is, is that unless they're needing to sell the stock because they have to go buy a boat or pay bills or something, the reality is that by holding the stock, the dividend itself tells you what the long-term direction is. But see, we don't look at it as a stock. We want to look at it as a company. And companies have up and down periods of time. The dividend is the management respecting the shareholder along the way through difficulty. But I got to say, I agree that people are looking at this saying there's secular challenges. Why trust a company like Verizon versus an AT&T? AT&T levered themselves up beyond that of most countries. Hmm. The Time Warner acquisition was a debacle. M&A is management saying they don't know what to do. Verizon resisted the temptation to go into the celebrity content game. So they've been more faithful. They're in a tough business and it's very CapEx sensitive. So that's going to hurt Verizon for a while. But they have not been untrustworthy the way AT&T is. And AT&T ultimately cut that dividend. Verizon's dividend sustainability is why people should trust it. That was a, gr that was a stirring defense. I would like you to be my defense lawyer, I think, someday. So what are then so a couple of other names or, or areas or final pieces of advice that you w would leave people with if they listen to that and say, OK, I'm on board. What do I do now? OK, so another company that people really didn't trust for a long time was Blackstone, and it's an asset manager. They are really involved in private equity, hedge funds, real estate. And that stock was around thirty dollars for a long time, but paying an eight percent dividend yield while people were waiting and waiting. The stock finally came all the way up into the 130, 140 range and really executed great. People on Wall Street finally saw what this company was about. Well, it's back down to 96 right now. They are kind of guiding lower. I believe it's a fee-based business that has $170 billion of investor money in cash to go out and invest if we do have a recession. And I think a company like Blackstone has earned people's trust and you're getting paid a great dividend while you wait. Wow, over 5%, 5.3 right now. Fascinating. David, yeah. thank you so much for all your time today. We appreciate it.
Thanks, Kelly. David Bonson.